All right, thanks for joining us. Another episode of Money TV. I'm Don Belarjan. So glad you could be with us. Money TV is the program all about money and what makes it happen. Now, if you've ever been to a national park, you've probably seen a sign that asks you to not feed the bears. We don't want the bears to become dependent on handouts and forget how to hunt and forage for themselves. For the last several years, however, not in our national parks, but in our national banks, we've been feeding the bulls rather than the bears with what is known as quantitative easing. Now, quantitative easing is a term for, well, basically for printing money, printing so much money that the government's able to purchase bonds and other assets that investors aren't, thereby artificially propping up the market. The arguments in favor of quantitative easing are by increasing the money supply, employers will be more inclined to hire, banks are more inclined to lend, and consumers, well, that's us, we would be more inclined to borrow and to spend, thereby keeping the merry-go-round spinning happily. Now, while quantitative easing may indeed work in theory and in the short term, the U.S. central bank's been doing it for so long, about five years, and at such a high level, $85 billion every month, that economists are beginning to wonder if the bulls are getting dependent. Even the hint of quantitative easing tapering by the Fed has been enough to send sellers scurrying, and with the Fed meeting next week to decide monetary policy, Speculation is high once again that at some point the Fed has to just stop it with the green ink or at least slow it down. There is the possibility of just the opposite, however. Mark Faber, who's the publisher of the Gloom, Boom, and Doom Report, said on CNBC just this week that rather than tapering, the Fed will likely be increasing their buying to $150 billion, $200 billion, even all the way up to $1 trillion per month. Now, Faber's speculation is based upon his opinion that the Fed has boxed itself into a position where it doesn't have an exit strategy and the fact that virtually every temporary government solution does indeed become permanent. I agree with him. Just as the real estate bubble was created a few years ago by the availability of cheap and plentiful mortgage money, artificially driving up demand and prices, there is now a paper asset bubble values of which have been artificially driven up by the Fed buying $85 billion per month in bonds that would otherwise be subject to supply and demand market conditions. It only took a few foreclosures to pop the real estate bubble and sent the market spiraling downward in 2008. What events could trigger the bursting of a paper asset bubble? Really is anybody's guess. Now you don't have to guess about this, it's our toll-free number, good from anywhere in the world you're watching the program, 888-259-4449 for information about our featured guests. When you do call, be sure and ask to be added to the subscription list of our Money TV newsletter. It is free, as is the toll-free call, 888-259-4449. On your mobile phone, just text Money TV to go 800 or 46800. And be sure to visit us at MoneyTV.net and like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. 